yeah, so we're just going to do a little uh, intro beforehand about who you are, Ellen, and what did you do beforehand, okay? Yeah, that's cool. All right? Yeah. You ready to start? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Let's go. Mm, welcome, welcome to the Ethan and Elvin Show. I am your host, Ethan Ziltner. I'm with my best friend, Elvin. <laughs> hey, how you doing, man? Uh, Elvin, we are going to be broadcasting on Apex Radio on the internet. I know that. Good news. The future. Good news. Where is that? We will be broadcasting every Monday and Friday from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask us on our Facebook page. You can like us on iTunes. You can also contact us on email at uh, the Ethan and Elvin Show at gmail.com. Also, turn your phones off. Yeah, I forgot to do that. Uh, but anyways, so I am going to get to know or help you guys get to know my friend Elvin here. Elvin, why don't you tell everyone about yourself? Oh, uh, of course, I'm Elvin Mims. Now, is that with one E or two? Uh, <laughs> it's one E. Uh, but uh, I was just a former professional basketball player. Um, started my collegiate career at um, Okaloosa Walton Community College, finished up at the University of Southern Miss, and from then on, I've just been playing professionally in, you know, different countries around the world, my last stint being here in Canada. so In the MBLC yeah. for the London Lightning, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. You won a championship with them? Yeah, I did. How many championships did you win in your illustrious career? Six. Oh, shit, that's six not bad. Ago, you played yeah. 13 years? Yeah. And I remember you telling me you went to the finals nine years? Yeah, I went to the finals, yeah. In the, whatever league you finished in, you always went at least to the finals n exactly, nine years, maybe yeah. 13. That's pretty good. So, yeah, I think that's the... And don't worry. If anyone wants to hear more, we our first podcast, Elvin and I talked for about 45 minutes. I'm not going to do it on you, Elvin. I'm not going <laughs> to get everyone to give you the complete breakdown from high school. So yeah. That'll be a different time. But, um, so, you did almost play in the NBA. Yeah. Why don't you tell everyone a little bit how that happened and how they contacted you and how that went? Oh, well, at the point, at the time, I had an agent. And, and how old were you, you sorry? Know, they contacted us, 22, and um, just finishing up college and, you know, had a, a gang of agents trying to, you know, get me to sign, and I went with this particular one, and, you know. Do you just, care to mention his name? Um, At the time, it's Tommy Smith. I nice think, guy? Yeah, he was okay, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it was just, it was one of those things, you know, you you. People see you play, you know, um, they, they like look your at game. your numbers, they, you know, your positions that you play and everything. And, you know, you're, you're invited to Chicago and doing a lot of workouts with a lot of different NBA teams. And, you know, of course, yeah, your fingers crossed come draft night. And, you know, unfortunately, my name wasn't called. But, you know, I got invited to uh, camp with the Hawks. And it was a mini camp, you said? Yeah, just kind of like um, – And what's a mini camp? Of, it's just um, it's a lot of – it's free agents. Um it's not really any of the guys that's on the multi-year deal. Trying to trying to get the last that's roster trying, spot? That's trying, yeah. So you have like 15 guys, 14, 15 guys fighting for like, you know, one, two, maybe three spots, you know. So, you know, and that led to me being invited to the veterans camp at Golden State. And, you know, due to injuries, I think I I probably would have made it, you know. What injury? Like everybody else say, but, you know. Due what to injury? Injuries. I, um, I took like a nice – a good injury to the I foot. I didn't know these injuries. Yeah, so I had one to my foot, and you know, the way the NBA goes, you have so many people on IR and all that stuff. So you uh. know, I had to be let go. But you know, it just opened up other doors for me. You know, at the time they had the CBA. I didn't know you had a foot. Yeah, problem. man, they had the CBA and had a draft, and I was picked number one overall. Um, and the CBA, if anyone's wondering, sorry to interrupt you there, but mm -hmm. the CBA at the time was the equivalent to the NBA G League or D League. And that was where you tried to get to the NBA. You didn't play in the D-League because it was just starting out and it was a, a kind of a big question mark behind it. The CBA was well more established. Yeah. And if you look into it, most of the well-established CBA teams are now D-League teams. But anyway, sorry. Yeah. So, yeah, I played there and, you know, played there for a few years. And Who drafted you? Uh, the Yakima Sun Kings. I was in Yakima, Well, these people don't know Elvin. Yeah, you got to fill Yakima, them in. Yakima, Washington, man. So I was drafted there. Good guy named Paul Wolford at the time was the coach and the GM. So um, he took me and. You know, just kind of gave me a – I think if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't have had the, the introduction into the professional league like I had, right? He was patient with me. and He let you grow? Yeah, he let me develop and, you know, grow mentally, physically, everything as a player, right? So, you know, I appreciate that. And after that, I kind of made a name for myself and it just kind of – Went know, from slowly, there. Yeah, just kind of went from there. And it's all good. And then 
you came to London, you heard about this league. What? How did you hear about the uh, NBLC? Oh, well, um, they had a team um, that I played for, and the coach was uh, – a well-known NBA player, Michael Ray Richardson. He is a very well-known um, NBA player. He was the coach, and, you know, when they, you know, finished up the team where we was at, um, he wound up getting the coaching job here. When he got the coaching job here, though, um, my, I was during my last stint in Australia. I liked him as a coach here, yeah, actually. Yeah, so, um, you know, they was calling and, you know, emailing. and. You always things. had high praise for him, actually, if I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a good, good coach. He's a player's coach. You know, so I mean, if you go in and you just like, ah, I don't, I don't like him. And it's, uh, you that's kind of tough. He was just kind of player's coach, right? He was just one of them kinds. Of like, what does that mean for the people who don't a know? A player's coach is is a coach that he's going to let you go out and do what you do as long because as he was a good the, player too. Well, as long as it's within the confines of the offense, he's not going to bother your game up. I mean, he's not going to let you come out and isolate for twenty seconds to try to get a shot off or anything. No, like but that. if you can take it, you take it. Yeah, if you could take it, if you in the middle of a play, if you if you break the playoff and you feel like you had the room to score the ball or make he something, was okay happen, with he that. was okay with it. He wasn't like a my way or the highway. We run fist thing. and then horns and then yeah, fist. like it's, I mean, you can initially start in those sets, but you know you see a mismatch if, if you get the ball and I'm supposed to down screen and you hit the guy coming up well if you look and they switch and I got to look guard on I me mean, you break there, the play there, and you yeah. throw it in the post and he was it was like that right so you know they contacted me and I wind up coming here and that was it and then you win a champion camp yep one one here weren't you almost the MVP for this league Elvin yeah my first year I was, well, why I was didn't you like, tell everyone about that? Oh, you said you were not gonna get into uh, all that I right know, now, man. We just gonna you know, know, do the intro, I mean, and I, but that's a re- more relevant story. Yeah, I know you don't really like talking about those older stories, but that's yeah. more relevant, though. Yeah, like I said, I was you know tip for tap. People for gotta MVP know how good you are, Elvin. I'm not that good at all. Oh, man. listen <laughs> to this guy. All right. I'm, I'm okay. Listen, to that. I'm okay. Yeah. That's what. I, that's fair to say. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. So that that's Elvin, and then my name is Ethan Zilner. There you go. No, I uh, I played basketball in Woodstock, Ontario, Canada, and played in London here a bunch. Oh, hi, Charlie. And my kitties are Charlie and Jasmine. And anyways, um, I have a big passion for basketball, and I also am probably one of the biggest Raptor fans. I don't know. I've yet to meet someone who knows more than me. Well, maybe Elvin, because Elvin loves the Raptors. Ready? Exactly, man. Love them to death. <laughs> Love them to death. <laughs> Who's your favorite NBA team, just for people listening? Oh, I mean, I've always been a, I've always been a Lakers fan. You've always, yeah, you've always been a Kobe I've fan. I've always actually, been a yeah. Lakers fan, but uh, I think right about now I have to go to to the Spurs. Uh, yeah, the Spurs have been yeah. my favorite team for the last five years. Yeah, so that'll be my team. Now. Ever since I did a lot more research into how basketballs operated and how things are ran, you really hear how you never, I've never heard anyone ever say one bad thing about Greg Popovich besides Lamarcus Aldridge, apparently. And uh, all you ever read about is how they take care of their players. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, and, and they, I just like them just because they, you know, they have a system and they run it. They execute it. They make it work. Greg Popovich is a player's yeah. coach. And they he? always, you know, people sleep on them, but they're always, <laughs> you know, like that top three, four seed come in, you know, playoff time. So it's Yeah, like, they're always. Yeah. yeah, they're, so, yeah. But, yeah. But anyways, we got a little NBA news to get to Alvin and, um, the Miami Heat are more than welcome to bring Dwayne Wade back, mm-hmm. but there's a stipulation of, and there's a little asterisk. Yeah, they're saying if he comes back, he can only sign for four point three million, which I don't really think the money is that big of a factor for him. I don't think he still be getting that twenty. He still would be getting bought out for the right? remainder of the twenty five million he's getting this year. But does Dwayne Wade, their Finals MVP, their best player in franchise history, deserve to come off the bench? Because apparently they've said they've put too much money into Dion Waiters with his four-year, $52 million deal yeah, that I, Dwayne Wade's going to have to come off the bench. Sure, if he does, see, that's amazing. But, but I don't see it, though. I mean, James because, Johnson can come off the bench. I mean, but no, nah, but James Johnson got four years, like 60. You know, like, he got four years. Well, you just gave, um, what's the what's the guard? Then Dion Waiters can come off the What's bench. the guard? Tyler Johnson. Tyler Johnson. I know. You gave him four years. He's but Elvis' you, best friend. But I'm saying they gave him four years, 50. He came off the bench. Yeah, so, so that's, it's, that's it's not, not bad then, deal. yeah. Four years, 52, he can come off the bench, man. Dion I Waiters mean, should. especially if you say his limited minutes. If you're going to bust his minutes in half and he's going to get at least 23, 24 minutes a night, 
You know what I'm saying? I mean, because Wade is not trying to play 30 minutes a night. You know what I'm saying? 40 minutes a night. He wants 25 to 27. Let him get his 20 some minutes a night. You know, chop him up between him and Deion Wade. Of course, he's going to have nights he's going to sit out for rest. Of course, he's going to have nights where he just he's sitting out Because Dwayne minutes. Wade, you don't get him to play all yeah, 82. Yeah, if you do, not, he's not going to be playing that many minutes. not good for the playoffs, right? No. So, it's just, I mean, the minutes are going to be there, but you don't. You can come off the bench. Dude, that's, like almost, that's almost like saying that when. If you think about it, Wade's 35. When Jordan came back to the Bulls, he was what, 32? <laughs> was he 32? Yeah, right. All right, so that – okay. And even when he came back and just made his first game, Phil Jackson didn't bring him off the bench. He started. Hey, yeah. You know what I'm saying? When he wore the number 45, he came back could and Could you he imagine started. if they did that to him? So how could you – I mean, but I'm not saying that Wade is no MJ, but you still – He guy's is their the, MJ, he's though. The, he is, yeah, if you were to say he is their MJ, like the guy, three championships there. You yeah, three championships there. A finals People will MVP. say LeBron is, but no, Dwayne Wade is a homegrown talent. Yeah, from there, yeah. Like he's been there from day one. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's no, you don't bring him off the. Bench. And I find this very funny because as soon as Dwayne Wade signed with the Chicago Bulls last year, yeah. it was like two weeks later. Pat Riley's like, "Oh, I made a huge mistake, and we should have signed him. I made a big mistake. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm going to do everything in my power to try and get him back. And now they can get him back, but now they're like, oh, well, you know, you got to still do it on our terms. It's like, yeah. man, shut up. I mean, this guy's done way too much for you. Yeah, that's the nature of the but but then if I'm him, I'm going to be like, all right, well, guess who's going to Cleveland? This guy. Yeah. Screw it. <laughs> to be out of there. Yeah. Play against you. You just, you guys just took but yourselves you off the list. Yeah, you don't do that, though, man. Like, but what are the that. chances of Dwayne Wade saying, yeah, I'll do that, actually. I'm okay. I mean, that's, that's another thing, right? You don't know. He might be okay with that. You know, it might just be us fans that's like, you don't do that. But to him, he might be okay with it. He might be like, actually, am I still going to get my 24 minutes? I yeah. don't care. Yeah, let me come off the bench. Let that. Yeah. Could be honest with you. When I got to the back end of mine, it was nice. Well, I wish that, that I could just. That was be my next question. I just, it, was, it was like nice. Well, I just be like, you know what? Let them go. Let them get that first six, seven minutes out of that just quick tempo up and down. And then put me in once the game got a flow going to it. You know go go against a couple second unit guys, yeah, too. No, nah, huh? it ain't even that. It's just you don't want to be out there like in that first, you that, that adrenaline and all that yeah. running. And you. The first four or five minutes, that's a track meet, and you having like, it is a track you know, it's just like, man. So it's it just depends. He might be okay with it. I don't know. Yes, Charlie, he might be okay with it. I know. Jesus, that's my kitty, Charlie. He loves to say hi. But anyways, I don't know that. Yeah, because that was going to be my next question to you. When you're 35 years old and your coach comes to you and just says, you know, Eddie, this is our rotation. You're going to be our sixth man. If last two minutes of the game, when it's crunch time, we're down five or up five, you are going to be in the game. Put me in. I just are you cool with coming I'm off the cool bench? I'm cool with that, yeah. man. Because it's not really who starts it anyway. Dwayne Wade's still going to get like 25 it's, million it's, bucks it's, as yeah. well. It's just who finishes it, man. So, I mean, it's, that's, that's the, the yeah. thing about it. It's who finishes the game. Uh, when it comes down and they need a good decision maker out there, Depends on the situation. They need a basket. He's going to be on the floor. It's going to be him. Because I don't care how him being 35. If you put him on the floor, People you have watch. to adjust your defense for that period. You know what I'm saying? So he still gets double teamed 100%. Yeah, so it's just, that's just what it is, man. Because let's say, let's say the Heat are down two points. They got a minute and a half. No, 35 seconds to go. Dwayne Wade's taking that shot, right? He's going to be in. And the ball's going to be in his hand. Whether he takes the shot or he makes something happen with a quick two-second pitch and a shot, is I want the ball in his hand. And He's going to make off. the right yeah, play. True. Yeah, I, I put it in his hand to make the right play. True. I don't want to put it in nobody else's hand. It's not going to be and Dion. Depend, and depend on them to <laughs> get him the ball. You know what I'm saying? So. Okay, so Jabari Parker thinks he's worth a max deal, Elvin. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm worth. I want a million dollars too, but guess what? I don't think that's going to happen. But why isn't he worth? Because he can't play a full season, man. He's sure, blown he's, his ACL out as well too. I am no. not giving him a max deal. Well, Hell no. no. Sometimes you have to just bite the bullet and make it happen, man. Because if they you have, would take him, that chance. They, why not? If the, the dude is young, Ugh. if he has that chance, Ugh. if he has that, because if they got him, they beat y'all Raptors. I'm gonna tell you that face value right now. Yeah, if they have it, him, they beat your Raptors, and it depends on if you're looking into the future, dude. Like, that's why I'm telling you, for some reason, you think that you run an NBA team like you do Grand Theft Auto or something. just blown. Dude, but he's only, like, 21, dude. Like, that's what I'm saying. The well, power of you. Well, blowing it again. I mean, it's, of course, it's higher because he's blown it one time, right? Like, that's the thing about it. That's, it's higher, but. Sign him and trade him. No, nah, you're not going to sign a trade, man. But I tell you one thing. If they don't, somebody else will give it to him and they'll cool. face him. But cool, but then cool. you sitting up. Now you sitting up, just saying, John is going to take up. Here's his. 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 Here's
You have not heard that nowhere. So while you got them there, you need to keep them there to try to build around that. I'm sorry, but you can't say, you know what? Mm-hmm. We're going to just depend on Giannis to take us because regardless of what it is, there's nobody saying, you know what? We like a ton of Cooper. Let's go team up with him. Nobody's saying mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Everybody's hitting these big markets and teaming up. So if you got it there, you got to like you got to just play the piper, man. Like that's the thing about it. To be honest with you, I mean, what's the difference between him and Andrew Wiggins besides the fact that Andrew Wiggins just is healthy, healthy. And he's played eighty two games he's last, and his he's whole played. career? What's the difference though? Uh, you tell me. Elvin. I Isn't think that a I big think factor? Jabbar Park is Elvin, more of a factor. If I said to you, quick question: If I said to you, uh, I got two players, Elvin. Don't even say their names. Just we'll go. I got one player who's got a boatload of talent. He can score 20 points a game, no problem, but he can maybe play 50 games. Or I got a guy who's an Iron Man, he can still get you 20 points a game, and he can still do the same things, but he's playing 82 or 75. I'm thinking you're taking the guy who can play 75. No, Let's be real. You can't put that scenario out there. You're looking at it. Who would you rather factors. have? Would it's you rather many, have Andrew it's Wiggins? There's too many factors out there. You got to look at positions. You got to look at. They're basically the same position no, small forward, power forward. Andrew but he's not a power forward, forward. but they're yeah, both small three forwards. Two, man. They're like, both small forwards. You could put Jabbar Park out there at the three, the two, probably the four. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the thing about it. So uh, then who would you rather? Line, bottom line, they're going to have to pay this, man. You got other players. You talking about a max deal, but you got players that ain't – they healthy and they getting max deals and ain't doing nothing. Absolutely mm. nothing, right? Alan so Crab. let's say – I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to let Jabbar Park go. We're going to bring in a – Evan Turner. We're going to trade him and uh-uh. bring in an Allen Crabble. And that's, uh-uh. gonna, that's what's going to get us over the hump, right? Like, no, it's not. Sometimes you just got to roll them dice, man. You have to. You got to roll you them can, dice. Is that when you're going to have to have extensive conversations with the doctor to be like, okay, what, like are, the, what are we going to have to do? Like, How yeah. can we prevent this? Because some stuff you just can't help, dude. Like, some stuff you can't help. It's not like, you know what I'm saying, that dude, was, he just he blew his ace up. But then when he came back, you look at how he bounced back. He came back and was putting up great numbers. And it's just a freak landing, right? Like, it's not like he go in and he just took some contact and uh, fell over. He didn't do a Kyle Lowry. He didn't <laughs> fall on the floor and like somebody killed him or nothing like that, right? Like the dude just <laughs> jumped and he come down the wrong way, pap his ACL. That can happen with anybody. True. Like I've played with players. Like you, you sitting there and after you see it on film, you're trying to figure out like how in the hell Oof. did that injury happen off of that little move, right? But if they trying to build, those are their two guys. Jabari Parker and and um, Giannis, uh, right? So like they're gonna have to like you're gonna have to because if not, I promise you somebody else is gonna give it to him. Period. And you're gonna be stuck because it'd be something different if if I tell you what if you're it was swaying me here if it was Golden State saying that right then I'd be like okay because guess what anybody's gonna come flooding the Golden State and True. people come flooding the Cleveland people come flooding the Boston. You know, people will come flooding the San Antonio. The Bucks, the Bucks have to win first, don't yeah, they? they got to get like a, a – and win consistently. You know what I'm saying? Like year after year, you know, going – and then people start saying, okay, that could possibly be a destination. But you tell me how many players, when it comes up in, in destined spots or whatnot, where they might end up as a free agent, you tell me how many people's like, well, I've been – you know, I got discussions with Milwaukee. You know what I'm saying? Like you never hear that. No, true, You see true. what I'm saying? So, I mean, you got that there. You got to pay it. Hang on to the talent money you got. Yeah, right. because you got to think. You got Giannis. He's already – they've already inked him to a four-year, $100 million. Mm-hmm. He's going to get that extension. And then you got Jabari Parker. Other than that, you got – what, is it Chris Middleton? The, yeah. Isn't that his, the three? Other than that, who else do they have? You Malcolm got, Brogdon. He just won rookie of the you, year. Yeah. Oh, that's what I'm saying. He got rookie of the year, right? But they can – with him, they can pay him. That's where you can make up for that difference because mm-hmm. they can pay him – you know, four years, 50, four years, 52. And I think he'll ink that. Because it's his first contract. Yeah, his first contract. contract and he wasn't, was he undrafted or a second round? Second round pick. Second round He's pick. He's the first ever second yeah, round pick just, to be rookie yeah, of the year. Yeah, so that's just what it is, you know. But you got to keep him there, man. Which is kind of shocking, actually. I thought maybe. But then again, when you look into the, when I did look into a little bit of it, you had Manu Ginobili with his rookie year. He was okay. He wasn't the greatest. Michael Red also a second round pick. It was okay his rookie year. He didn't, no one, no second round pick had an outstanding rookie year like him. No, really, no. No. They all turned out to be great players in the next couple of years, I, like Michael but, Red, for instance. But yeah, but you look at it and you say, okay, is this the direction that the NBA is going? Huh? You got like these lottery picks doing absolutely nothing, and here comes this hunger second round pick, and he just Dream blows them out Green? the water, right? You, you get what I'm him? saying? Like I see what you're saying. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? Like you got all these guys going top ten, this and that stuff, and then does it kind of get in? Boom. This is my main. This is my question, just off the top of my head. When you're a top ten pick now, as opposed to even ten years ago or even fifteen years ago. Did you have as many people trying to make a brand with you as they did now? Because now it seems like they're all trying to 
Is that what maybe is distracting him? That's what I'm trying to get no, at. No, I don't think it can be distracting. Because when you're a second-round pick, are you seeing all this money coming into these other guys who just got drafted? Like, no, you're like, I need to get round, this. No, at that second-round pick, I don't need uh, the money. Yeah, of course the money. But I think half of it is the fact that, and I'm telling you from experience, I bet you half of them guys who went in the first round went to workouts with these guys in the second round and got their tails handed to them. Mm-hmm. And it's just more of a political thing, right? Who do oh. I take? Do I take this power forward from here who's putting up, you know, 18, 9, and 5? Or do I take, Some this, or do I take this power forward from here who we went to a bigger school, you I know, do. more televised, but he's on an average in like 13, 6, and more. More like, people know his news. More pe- you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what – and that's what's happening, right? So then you put these dudes up there. When you take these guys, some guys are just workers. Draymond Green – I'm not a big, huge fan of him, but I have to respect the you fact gotta respect he's a hustle, worker. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, and that's him. You know, some of these guys are just – they come out, you know, and from the Remember time – Remember Fab Mello? Yeah, just, just the, the, the <laughs> thing about it, though, man, is that they come out and from 10th grade, they go and light up this, this AAU or this Nike Adidas thing, and they pretty much locked into a top 10 draft pick. You know what I'm saying? Oh, this guy's going to be, you know, a, a lottery pick in his draft. He go to school – Average is about 13, 14 a game, stay injury free, you know what I'm saying? So they can just and just ride that year out, and then boom, here comes draft time, and he's, you know, he's going lottery. Then he hits the big time where well, these guys got just as much talent, and they work with it, and they just fall to the wayside, right? And boom, here it comes the look. Who's, who's coming up now? That's the guy the who's dim- ignored. That's the diamond and the rough side. Exactly. Are. That's what's happening, man. But hmm. so. so then. I got a question for you, Alvin. Yeah. The New Jersey Nets, they're a soft spot for me because I sh- – not a soft spot. I'm just intrigued to see how Sean Marks, who is a former Spurs uh, assistant general manager, is going to rebuild this team because they got no picks until 2019-2020. Mm-hmm. And so far what he's been trying to do, like he did last year, he got they got Alan Crabb now, but they offered Alan Crabb a big contract, Tyler Johnson a big contract. He tried to do it through free agency to build something. It's the only way. And he's kind of doing okay because he's gotten Damari Carroll. I don't know how that's going to work for them. No, meaning like he's got Damari Carroll's at least an NBA level player, right? So what it is is he's gotten stuff that other teams has tried. I said, you know what? I yeah, mean, I know that's his only rep really for working. now. This ain't really working right now. So what we gonna so, know? What do you willing to give us for this player? Oh, we'll give you this. All right, we'll take it. You know. So now they got this sixteen and then sixteen first million round a year off of their shit. To go sign bigger players and they get a good draft pick out of the deal. So I'm like, well, like, yeah, that's why I'm intrigued because he's he's taken some junk, but he's t- he got a first round pick out of the Raptors, okay. which is not bad. So for Damari Carroll for one more year because it's a team option for the final one, so you can just scrap that out of the books. Okay. So it's not doesn't look too bad on paper, and they're trying. I mean, speaking of players that nobody wants anymore, <laughs> <laughs> they're working out Jared Selinger and Tyler. Uh, Jared Selinger and Tyler Zeller. Yeah. Both uh, the Raptors didn't want him. The Suns didn't want Jared Selinger. And the Celtics didn't extend Tyler Zeller because they took his eight million bucks and said, We're gonna put this towards Gordon Hayward, which is very smart. Yeah. Well, I mean I, th- I like Zeller. I would yeah. I like him. But the I Nets mean, have the worked thing both about of them. With out. Jared Selinger, man, I I think if he got serious and just said, you know what, like, you know, I'm gonna lose this weight. You can't tell me it's not possible because Draymond Green was more fit than when he came in the league. Seriously. Um, Julius Randle the is Celtics more fit he than when he came in the league. Like, So, dude, you got the best of it. You got pretty much the best of the best. You can get a nutritionist. You can get with your trainer any time of day. You can lift, go get shots. And you can do all that stuff, dude. It's just it's getting to the point now where players are just like they get there and they're content. I made it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I've, it's just odd to see. Like, it looked like he's gotten bigger. Since he's gotten in the league, you know when what I'm he played like, for the Celtics his last year with the Celtics, they held a players only meeting and apparently they were in there for an hour and a half and 45 minutes of it was talking about Jared Selinger's weight yeah, and course. his commitment to being healthy. Like Cause I guess he ate like shit and they were so pissed off with the way he was treating his body and they're kind of questioning it. Like what the hell are you doing? Yeah. I mean, it's just, that's and that tough. speaks volumes, man. If that's happening in the NBA, like then, he apparently, I've looked up some stuff on Instagram from him and some other articles. Apparently, he has hired a nutritionist, and since the Suns waived him because he was on the Raptors and traded to the Suns for two second-round picks, when he got waived by the Suns, 
he has lost 45 pounds since then. Yeah. So. Apparently, which he should have done, like Elvin was just saying, he should have, that shouldn't have been a factor, but whatever. I think personally, though, and I don't, I don't know about you, but you can say in a sec, I think I would rather take Tyler Zeller. That seems like a more point. solid idea. Yeah, I would at this point. Anyway. I would just, I don't know. Unless he re- he'd have to really woo me in the workouts, but even then, is that even a thing, Alvin? Do the does no, impressing in workouts do much? Mm, no, because I don't. It's not really game type situations, right? Would you sign him if you signed Jared Sullinger? Would you do it on one of the new two way contracts where you can just send him to the D League freely? And would you have him go in the D League first? Um, I would. I would try to work out something like that. If I could be honest with you, I don't think. What's the worst that can happen, really? Yeah, or you try to have to just do a non guaranteed or something like that. But I mean, it's and in that, if that's not a slap in his face, I don't know what is. Like yeah. that needs to be the biggest. Just, this needs to be the biggest yeah, wake up call for him. But it's just like, dude, like because when you see him when he's in some, when he's somewhat in shape or whatnot, man, like you he's see what he does. It's he kills on the offensive glass and stuff. A lot. He's of not bad at form. all. It's just I don't care who you are, man. Like if. If you come in at 260, right, let's say you come in at 260 and all of a sudden you pick up another 40, 50 pounds, dude, like it is going to affect your game tremendously. You know, like it's no way for you to tell me it's not, you know, and it's just it's just crazy, man. Like I don't get it, but. Well, I don't know. We're going to take a little quick look at his numbers here and we're going to see what his last numbers were. Oops, sorry, I dropped my phone. Um, we're going to see what his numbers were his last year because – if I remember correctly, it's around 12 and 7. And yeah, his last year, or sorry, his best year was with Boston in 2014, 2015. And he scored 13.3 points per game. He had 7.6 rebounds and 2.3 assists and 0.8 steals, 0.7 uh, blocks per game. What that means is is he's not a bad facilitator. He oh. seems like he can be a good passer oh, in the low man, post. Like that right there, get him. His That'll last season, he had 10 points yeah. and 8 rebounds. That'll get him 80 mil or 80 mil contract, four years, 80. In the league, if he was they, in shape, yeah, if he was in shape, he'll, you know, what I'm saying he could still make money, right? Because and the thing about it, if he make that mark on it, he can play for years because they're not expecting Passing twenty big points men's a game. Are very yeah, hard they're not to come expecting by. twenty, twenty five points a game from him, right? They expect him to thirteen, and then they know it's going to gradually kind of drop down as he get older and older. Probably you he know could be saying? like Boris Diaw as an example. If yeah. people are wondering as a comparison, because yeah. if you think about it, one of Boris Diaw's best attributes is his passing ability and the fact that you can use him almost as a de facto point guard yeah. at times right. and that he just knows what to do like we just keep saying though if your weight is a factor nba talent doesn't seem to matter though the executives and gms are still going to be like i don't think so tim so yeah. i don't know that's that's what i would think i would offer just a two-way contract and just be like look take it or leave it if you don't like it uh we've got nothing to lose you're almost wasting our time yeah but anyways elvin yeah it's our segment that we like to we're gonna just try out for a little. Go ahead, I'm listening. You gotta cut one, trade one, extend one. Okay, who are they? You can't look. Stop looking. Jesus. Anyways, Giannis had a Kumbo. Okay. Kawhi Leonard. Or Paul George. All right. Here, so here's some no. numbers quick. Here's some numbers. Wait, 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 wait. I already kinda got it. I know the numbers. I'm gonna tell you now. I'm gonna go on it. I can just tell you. Wait, right wait, 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 wait. Okay. <laughs> I did a lot of research for this. And, you know, anyways, so Giannis had 23 points per game, eight rebounds, five assists, and one and a half blocks a game. Okay. Kawhi Leonard had 25 points per game, six rebounds, three and a half assists, and one and a half steals per game. Okay. Paul George had 23 points per game, six rebounds, and three assists, and he had like 0. .8 and 0. .8 for both. For steals right. and blocks. Who would you rather? Okay, I'm finna tell you. You ready? Cause it's, you yes, might now wait. I'm ready. Hold on, hold on to your seat, man, because it's finna, gonna blow you away I for I think I minute. already know, but anyways. All right, I'll tell you what. You already know what am I going to do. You're going to say Giannis. I'm going to do what with Giannis? You're going to keep him. You're going to extend him. You're okay. going to cut Paul George, and you're going to trade Kawhi Leonard. Exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. Tell me why. Well, you're going to keep Giannis because Giannis can be like a point guard. He, you don't know what you can do with him. He's a one through five, basically. You're going to trade Kawhi Leonard because there's a lot of value there. And Paul George, I just don't know why you'd cut him, to, but I think he's just a short end of the straw. I mean, he just fell in the wrong category. Yeah. Uh, like with Giannis, he's up and coming, right? Like he hasn't even peaked. He's 23. Yeah, he, hasn't even, he hasn't even peaked yet. Like that's well, the he thing. He still has like it. five more years before you know, he gets into his physical yeah, prime too. It. So he hasn't even peaked yet and he's doing that. I think with you can get more 
trade value out of Kawhi Leonard than Paul George at this point, you know. And, you know, you can get pieces, good pieces to throw around. So you would trade Paul George? No. Oh, sorry, no. Because I would trade Kawhi Leonard. There's a higher value there? Yeah, it's a higher value there. In my personal opinion, I think it's a higher value there. You can get, you know, you can get a couple good pieces. You can get a couple good pieces and, you know, maybe even pick up a draft pick or two to put around him, right? I mean, if you take Giannis and you give him a legit point guard and a legit big. Do you extend Giannis to that super duper duper max where it's like the two hundred and seventy five nah, million? I don't think I give him that right now. Like I mean he had a good year. Don't lie, he's been progressively getting better every If year he wins there. an MVP, do you but, give him that? No, nah, he don't even have to win MVP. I think if he throw it together like a good three years of just killing it the uh, way he did. Okay, so he's got these two more years. He's consistent there. He's two proven more, his okay. consistency on that superstar level, right? And Don't just, want it to be a fluke year. Yeah, you have a year where he go off, and then you give him all that money, and it's just like, like Days. the Oprah segment, like where are they now? Like I don't <laughs> see that in him. Yeah, I don't see that in him. But you know, you never know. You know, but true. I think that's what that would be my decision, though. You cut, save that for when he's twenty eight, and then yeah. you give him the super duper. Yeah, cut Paul George. No, nah, twenty three now, twenty six. That's what I mean. You sign him to yeah. a five year like max deal now. Yeah, and then twenty eight when he's done his contract, you give him the super uh, duper yeah. man. You know, like I say, it's no telling, man. Then, you know, your place might be prime destination for NBA by then, players. Yeah. Man, by then, you know? Aren't they going to be doing some heavy – are they getting a new arena? I can't remember. I'll I think they are, the Bradley Center. I, I think know. they're getting – the Brad, you were saying the Bradley Center is pretty rough. It is, man. I was wrong. <laughs> when I was in college, we had to play there. Was, when was that? When was that? Like 2002. Yeah. Why was it rough? Now. It was just – like, it just needed a lot of stuff done to it, man. I mean, the floors was nice and all that, but the actual building, you can tell it was old. So. Uh, do you not like the change rooms and all that jazz? Well, it was all right, man. I'm not seeing anything. It's an old piece of crap. That's basically all you need to know. And they need to replace it. Anyways. Uh, so, Elvin. Yeah. That's who you went with. Mm-hmm. You went with Giannis. All right. Fair enough. And Elvin. What's up? Is there anything else you want to tell them about your professional career? Anything uh, you want to? No, just... I'm pretty sure over a period of time, you know, if people tune in, stay tuned in. We'll touch on bits and pieces, man, until we figure out, you know, we get completely how I got here. But you know, right now we just just keep on up and up on what's going on. You know, let them know why, you know, I'm me and you, you on this side of the a side of the spectrum of basketball. You know, just pick your brain a little bit. Well, for just people for people wondering. Why are you still here in London, Ontario? Why haven't you went back to the States yet? Because you're retired and you have a son. Yeah, I have, that's to be honest with you. That's the reason. Yeah? Yeah. This has been, you know, point blank period. That's the reason that I'm still here. You know, it's for my son. So. And your son's name's Kellen? Yeah. Just turned three in June, man. That's my little dude. So. You When's know, he going to start playing basketball? Man, whenever. He, you know, he plays now, man. I think as soon as he gets, you know, to the point where he wanna, he can get it up to the rim and all that. Probably even before then, man. Like, it, when there's interest there and he wanted to go, like I said, man, because I did it, I'm not going to force him to do it. I will not force him to do it. If he's into it, then my only rule is with anything. If you don't do it, you're going to finish it and you're going to apply yourself. That's my only thing, you know. So if he's going to do it, he's going to apply himself. So then yeah. let's say in a perfect scenario, he's gonna, he wants to be a basketball player and he's, he keeps I, I want to be like, you know, I want to be a professional basketball player. And from now until the age of 10, what are your plans then? Like for him to try and develop. <laughs> to develop? As a basketball player. Is the people think I'm crazy when I tell you this. I think the last thing we will ever work on is his shot. It, I mean, we'll, Why is we'll, that? Touch, we'll touch and we'll touch on it and, you know, we'll make sure it's there. But to put in severe work, severe work, severe work on just shooting. I don't think I'll do that. So you be dribbling more? Because, it's, I mean, at, between those ages, you don't really have too many kids, you know crossing over pulling up trays <laughs> you know they, it's all pretty much pass at the basket you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying catch it's, it's that anyway so in between now if he started at that next year at four between the time he's four and he's 14 his shot will be unchanged three or four different times because he'll, he's getting stronger he's able to get it to the rim so i think the Even first thing 14 to 18 the first thing change. yeah the first thing that i'm working on with him is his ball handling his um uh, his passing and his defense and when so, he's dribbling, are you just going to give him a tennis ball? Start off. No, nah, he's going to be. Uh, he'll be like dribbling. He's going to have it on a string. Like, Meaning be for sure. Like he's going to be comfortable left-handed, right-handed. Mm. You know, he'd be comfortable pushing the ball. You know, looking ahead, not watching the ball. 
and are you going to train him? Let's say he's going to be big like his daddy, but are you still going to teach him to be a point guard first, or what's your? No. what do you think? Well, right, he'll have handles. Like, he will have the ball handling skills, but I'm not going to say you're a point guard. You know, I want him to be a basketball player. I'd rather him be versatile than to nail to one position. And that's like, honestly, with you, that's the one thing that scares the living crap out of me here. It's because all he got to do is be bigger than everybody. And the coach is like, you go to You're the, the center. Lock. You're I'm 6'2", and I had to play the center. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and then I'm like, that's the only thing that kind of like, you know, scares Because I do like trainings and whatnot. And that's like one of the biggest things that happens when kids come to me, right? It's like they're a little bit taller than everybody. So, you they know, don't know how to dribble a ball. The, the kid, the coach is just like, oh, you're going to the block and go turn and post. We're not going to give it to you. You're we'll run to two. the block and turn and post, you know, and it's like. That's not very tall no, for basketball. I mean, he's going to be. Yeah, I already know. I mean, I'm 6'5 now, and he's, you know, just three, and he's pretty much at my waist, right? So oh, I'm 6'5. His mom's almost 5'10. So, you know, we yes, don't really. Veronica so, yeah, tall. I don't really see him being, you know, <laughs> you know, a short. He's going to be pretty tall. When it's going to come, we know we don't know, but. I just rather him being able to, to do it all. You know, he'll be able to, you know, play. I want him to be just as comfortable playing with his back to the basket as he is facing it, you know. So he's going to learn everything, the yeah. smart things. I think do. that's the, and I think that's the advantage of having, you know, a father that did it, right? Like, I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to try to live vicariously through him. I'm not going to put that pressure on him. Like no, that, you've said you know that many saying? times to I me. I will now. not, you know what I'm saying? I will not do that to him. You know, I want him to fall in love with the game first and then we go and from It there. seems like it's there. Yeah, like he loves. I mean, but it, you know, he just he also, he also loves sure. Spider Man too. Yeah, though. he loves everything <laughs> right now. You know, so you know, it's just that's what I plan on doing with him. You know, you know, we're developing as he go. Is he going to play every sport? I don't know. I mean, you got me with basketball. He he loves playing football. He might be able to swing a baseball bat like his dad. Hey. You guys got to see Elvin swing a baseball bat. Hey. That's a whole other thing. Done in there, man. I don't know. You know. We don't want the we don't want the Blue Jays to hear you <laughs> come calling in and want to give me a big deal. In all but seriousness, no. he crushed the hell out of like six balls. It was impressive. But Anyways, no. but yeah, that's just my thing with him, man. Like you know, it's just let him develop, and and I've always said that we're talking with people, man. Just you know, let let him fall in love with the game. Don't you know? be the screaming parent. Yeah, like, don't just let him fall in love with the game, and because you find out like ninety nine percent of the screaming parents was trash. <laughs> and they play. That's just the border. That's the problem of it, right? It's, the, it's, it's that, true, too. It's that dad sitting there I screaming. I reckon I know that, yeah. It's that dad sitting there screaming with his arms folded, but, you know, he couldn't even make the team in high school, but he just loved the sport, so he was just like a playground, you know, YMCA trash legend. talker. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that to him, man. Like, you know, I, I, I keep it real with him, you know. He come in, if he had a good game, hey, you played a great game. All right, it's time to get ready for the next one. That was going to be my you next know, question. Uh, so let's say he plays a really good game. Do you still do you give him the compliment sandwich? Do you go, you played very well here, here, and here, but do you remember when you made X, Y, and no, Z No, I'm not going to point out no? because nobody's going to play. Nobody plays perfect basketball. If that was the case, We'd Jordan, all be perfect, Jordan yeah. would get critiqued from the day he started to the day he finished. You get what I'm saying? Like Nobody plays the perfect game. It's just all you have to do in basketball is limit the mental laps. You can't even say play mistake free. You're gonna have mistakes. Just limit the mental lapses of the game or whatnot, and you'll be okay. Play within your game. Limit the mental lapses and just bring it every night. Um, so he plays. You know, if he comes to me and say, "What do you think that you know?" Something I need to work on or whatnot. Well, you know, your court vision can be a little better. You know, mm. you, have, you have other people that's open. Jasmine, and, he will critique you know, your game next. And they can get you know, you can hit them if they miss it. They miss it. That's why they put five people on the court. But it's just, I'm not gonna be. You know, you come in on the ride home. I'm, I'm just giving it to him and looking mm. at him in the rear view, like you hear me. You can knock it off. You know, yeah. that's one thing you don't have to worry. The about. The 80s are so, over. Yeah. So. Fair enough. Um. <clears throat> And for all the people wondering, um, and I'm kind of curious too, what's your game plan then for him to start lifting weights then? Or when does he start the plyometric system? Dude, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's just hard to say, man, because... I'm just generally... Intrigued. Yeah, it's hard to say, man, because, I mean, you, you could start the plyometric because you can always work on speed and footwork. Speed, footwork. So like a foot ladder ability. and skipping? Yeah, I, to take him in a weight room and just start trying to like get him. And also, people for like, for uh, people who are wondering at home with their kids if they're in sports too. I guess that's yeah. Thing I'm not gonna, for you. you know, he's not gonna be seven, eight years old. If you want to get him some push ups and some sit ups and some body squats and stuff like that, that's fine. So if they're under ten, they should not be lifting yeah, any weights at all. Like I, like personally, not even would, a medicine ball. I, I, I mean, you could do certain stuff, but I mean, their bodies are still developing, right? Like, you know, it's just that's just how it is. I mean, it's. 
you don't so skipping in a foot ladder would be the yeah, best skipping purchase. Foot ladder, I mean, because it's conditioning. It's, it's just natural movement, right? You're going to naturally be jumping up Some and down. Some pylons and get them to yeah, go comb to comb. Different, yeah, different stuff like that that they can improve on. But as far as trying to just add, you know, I want my kid to be 13 with a 35-inch vertical. So we're going to load up the squat rack, boys, and all that. Like, <laughs> no, it, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's just, that doesn't you know, no, no, it's it doesn't not smart. at all. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was, that's me. I'm just like, you know, we can work on stuff, lateral movement, you know, work on speed, you know, dribbling from, you know, I do a lot of speed work with him with a ball in his hand as well, dribbling from one end to the other one, moving lateral. With Two it, balls, like stuff that. like yeah, that. just stuff like that because it's natural movement, right? It's, it's just it's stuff that he would take from here to here. But, you know, that's just how it is. But I don't, I'm not going to be in there and, you know, we, we <laughs> got him in there and trying to get him to ref out at 225 at like 14, <laughs> 15 years old. Rack like, him up. Yeah, no. Fair enough because, yeah, I've – I've told some people at work where I work is we'll mention that later, but anyways, um, and they've always been intrigued cause they, they go, Oh, Alvin, he played for how many years? I don't know, 13 years. And they go, Oh, w- he has a kid. Yeah. What's his plan? Does his kid already like really good at basketball? And I said, well, no, his kid's going to be good when his kid wants to be good. It's not going to be Alvin making his kid good because that doesn't help you for nothing because eventually the kid's just going to resent the sport. Yeah. And I've seen that firsthand to be honest with you. And anyways, uh, they would always ask me like, "Oh, well, what do I do? What do I work on?" And I'm like, well, now they can listen and find out. And <laughs> that's something that you would recommend, though, eh? is a foot ladder and a skipping rope. Yeah, then, I mean, because I don't care what sport you're playing: hockey, baseball, football, basketball. Right? Quick feet. Yoga? Would you yeah. get your kid to start yoga soon, or sh- like some stretches? Mm, stretching, yeah. Like, um, I don't. I wouldn't. I kind of keep him out of yoga for a little bit, but I mean, his mom might have all that taken care of anyway. So I don't know, but. Uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't start really getting into yoga until, you know, the back end of my career, right? So, and it yes, was just but you like, know what you know was, now. Yeah, it was just all know. like stretching purposes and whatnot. But, you know, the kids are kids, right? The kids, are, you're flexible, you're all True. that stuff, right? So, you know, it's just, yeah. And my other question is, because I've had some other people ask me this, and I've already, you've already answered it, but we're going to ask you again anyways. Um are you going to move to Toronto? Is Are you going to move to a bigger city? Are you gonna, Once your kid's old enough, are you going to get the hell out of here? Or is London a big enough city where you can establish yourself? Or does that even matter? Dude, really? I'm going to tell you what's crazy about it. I don't, it. The city, the size of the city has nothing to do with the with the talent and the development of a player. You know, because some people say, yeah, because you go someplace and he, he will play top-notch talent night in and night out. You know, but... On the flip side, you have just as many players that are like extremely good players who they just be more concentrated. Yeah, they just more they're just more focused on their game, right? They have the heart. They're not bagging down. They put in the work. They trust the work that they put in, and they go out and they do it, right? So it's that's just where's that? So no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna if we gotta load up and we gotta travel somewhere for a weekend, then so be it. But you know, I, I think I'm not gonna say 100 percent no. But I'm not gonna sit here and say, yeah, that would be the a only question's gonna come up, Elvin. Yeah, it's gonna come up, but it's just gonna have to be, you know, like him involved. It wouldn't just be me and his mom talking. You know, mm-hmm. it's, I'm gonna sit down like it's gonna be. You know, at that point, he'll be, you know. Will you go back to Florida with him? Would I go? Would back? you ever think about? It? Yeah, I mean, with the states being the way they are now, dude, I'd be terrified. Because if anyone's wondering, that's there. where you're from, right? You're from yeah, Florida. Yeah, from Florida, I'd be terrified to take him down there. You know what I'm saying? Not just even for sports purposes. Why just would you be in terrified, general, man? It's just it's a whole different. It's oh, we don't know different. we're in Canada. Yeah, it's just completely different, man. It just how it is stuff that he'll have to deal with down there that outside of basketball. The dope boys. You were it's not even about. that. It's just you no know, racial profile and oh. all that stuff. I just don't want to. I mean, that's everywhere you go, but it's not like, as bad here, eh? No, I just don't want him to have to deal with all that stuff on top of, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so. Because I get that I question a lot, too. Yeah, I thought about it, you know, would I, put the, would I possibly do that? And right, if, if we have to say right now, no, I wouldn't do it right now. Because I always get that question. They're like, oh, who you do a podcast? I'm like, oh, Elvin, he's from the States, he's from Florida, and they're like, and he's here? And they all go, Argh. and I'm like, actually, he loves it here. He mm-hmm. says, besides it being really cool, he says it's really safe. He says he it's really just, enjoys the enjir- environment. He says, compared to Florida, he said it's a lot, it's a whole different animal down there is yeah. what you've been telling me. But Yeah, but yeah. it's just, you know, I just, you know, it'll just be something that have to be made later on. But if we, if I had to make that decision now, then no, I'll, I'm not taking him. So, hmm, 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 hmm. Well, fair enough. Elvin, speaking of Michael Jordan's for franchises, have you seen the Vince Carter documentary yet? I'm talking about the, uh, the one with Steve Smith? 
I believe so. I can't quite remember. I got to check it out. I want to watch it tonight, actually. I want to. It's called The Carter Effect. Oh, no. I haven't seen that one. The last one I seen is the one he did with uh, Sportsnet or whatever. With Steve Smith. No, they was just kind of sitting. I might have to. You say it's The Carter Effect? It's called The Carter Effect. Well, yeah, it's on the Toronto International Film Festival. I'm going to stream it uh-huh. illegally. Yeah, I'm going to check that out now. <gasps> I thought you were going to give me the gears. Yeah, I thought you were going to be like, Vince Carter get a documentary. Come on. No, that's my that dude's the truth, man. <gasps> Vince Carter's the truth. You actually liked him? Yeah. Okay, I have another question for you about, I've already asked you this, but I have a friend from work, Andrew Smith. He really wants to know, the guy we have baseball with, he wants to know what you think, what's your actual thought of the Raptors and what's the thought of the Raptors coming from the States? Like, what was your guy's perspective? Because from our perspective, obviously, Dude, we're like, just like, hey, is the Raptors cool, sweet. Yeah, like, in the States, you know, or at least where you were from. It's just the thing about this is different between it being here, the Raptors being here, and then it being in the states. And I'm just speaking about the Raptors right now. Is that in the states, dude? You got to prove it year in and year out. You know, you can't just hit the scene, do well for a couple of years, and then you know what I'm saying. It's like in the states, it's more of what have you done for me lately kind of thing. You right? hear that a lot about the states, and that's just what it is. Like, you know, after a while, people be like, okay, you know, they making it to, okay, they making it to, you know, the playoffs. They are the second round, all this and that. But you go to doing that two, three years in a row, people going to be like, man, all they going to do is make it to the first round in this watered down conference and then get beat. So Let me, can I add to the question quickly, mm-hmm. sorry? So it's 1993 or 1995. Mm-hmm. You, you just found out that the Raptors got an expansion franchise. What was going through your head then? The <laughs> one. To be honest, Jesus which we was, this is no, nah, this is, I'm gonna be real <laughs> with you, man. From the states, like you, you it's, it's funny you go back to that time, man, because 1995 it was the Raptors in Vancouver, right? Yep, 1995 so, was first. Okay, so right? you looking at that, dude? You tell me what was happening in the 95, 96. I would. I was like five years the, old. The Bulls was killing it. The Knicks had a team. We the beat Pacers the Bulls had a team. that year, though. The Pacers We're had one a of team. Those ten losses. Okay, the Pacers I've had it for a team. Years. The Pacers had a good squad, like. New that's Jersey true. had a really good squad. Good. Everybody, San Antonio, Houston, you know, that's when Sacramento, the Lakers, like Sacramento everybody had a team, dude. So, when, to be honest with you, we weren't thinking about the Raptors. So, honestly, stuff. though, you heard, there was a, you heard there was this franchise is expanding in Canada. You were just like, oh, that's cool. That's yeah, it. that's cool. Like, you Did know. You even look at, I guess there's no Google back then. So no, you didn't even I think the, mo- the one thing we knew about Vancouver was when, Oh, that was the team that Steve Francis wasn't going to. And then when it comes to the Raptors, it'd be like, hey, that's the team that Stoudemire played for, ain't it? Like, But he doesn't want to be there it. anymore. Like, that was just it. That was like, and I'm being honest with you, that yeah. was the only time that the other teams, because the league was like, it was so competitive, and you had so many teams clashing until it was like, if they wasn't in the mix of that, that clashing and stuff, if they wasn't like the In Celtic, the top five or seven? Yeah, on each, each conference, wasn't nobody really paying attention to them, man. That's just, I'm just being honest with you, right? I know you don't like it. You got a bitter beer face happening right now, but hey. So then, what about when Vince Carter left and then Chris Bosh took over? You guys were obviously in corporate press with Chris Bosh, right? You guys were like, oh, Chris Bosh, look at him go. When was that? Oh, I can't remember. Dude, but like, <laughs> yeah, it was, I'm just saying. It was man. like 2004, 2005 yeah, is when you got traded. I don't know. I still, I still. I'm going to tell you honestly, man, when I really started like watching the Raptors and stuff, because when I came here, like honestly, man, that's like two thousand. So, like that's when I came here, and it's, it's no bad thing. But it was just always, you know, because the teams are not, their games are not really being televised. No, in the, the CRTC, we can they're not being that. televised in the states unless they're playing like Cleveland or like they'll, let's say they playing the Lakers. The Raptors have never played on like Christmas. That. Yeah, like ever. their games are not being televised. So when we turn it on, you know, here it's like I don't care who playing. You can have Golden State and Cleveland playing, but they're gonna have the Raptors playing the Nets. On here, right? <laughs> like that's on just ESPN, yeah, well, wouldn't they do? You know, that's just, I'm just saying, that's how it is. So, y'all going to see them regardless to us? No, that's not going to happen. You're going to have Golden State stuff. So, you'll have five or six games going on, but it's going to be like all, you know, within the states. And one so, of the teams won't be the Raptors. No, unless they play one of those oh, teams. But, no, no, they're not. No, you know, it's not. You're not going to turn them. ESPN or nothing like that in the states. They say, had hey. a solid team. They're not going to say, "Hey, Tush was tune a building in, block." Hey, tuning in from Toronto, Ontario. Like, it's the only time that's going to happen is in playoffs because <laughs> then it's going to happen. But yeah, right, even when it. we were in the playoffs playing Orlando, we were on ESPN three. Yeah. Hey, gotta crawl for you, all, man. Jesus <laughs> Christ. So if anybody's wondering what the people in America if they think of the Raptors, I don't know. I'm, I'm just speaking for me. He's just being honest. He's just being real. 
Um, so then when you were professional, did you ever try to contact the Raptors? Or how did you can't just contact oh, a team that work out, can you? No, no, He's like, hey, can I work out for you yeah, guys? Yeah, it does. If that was the case, they jam would be jam packed every day. You know what I'm saying? Like, That's you don't, true. You can't just start. Like, you got to have a resume. Like, and when I say a resume, like a good one for them to even want to take a look at bringing you in. Well, it when depends. they brought Anthony Parker over, he was like a yeah. three-time it, it MVP. De- yeah, it depends on what position they need to fill mm-hmm. and what position that you play. So it's all the factors that are, you know, you, I'm a big man and I put up 20 and 10 for three years Sign in a row, me. but the Raptors are needing a two and a three. You yeah, know what I'm saying? You can't like, go wrong. It's like Jabari Parker when you got to take the talent when it's there. All right, man. You got it. Well, that's it for today, then. We will be back on Friday. Oh, boy, Elvin, I'm excited. I can tell. Um, I'd like to give a big thanks to our official sponsors. Ooh. Elvin, have you done your taxes? <laughs> I'm always, man. I always make sure the oh, taxes are done. Elvin, do you have, like, $10,000 you're not using? You just need to... Uh-huh. Wash, as the kids say. Uh, who got ten thousand that they need to wash? Why do they need to wash it? I don't think ten. I don't think washing ten thousand dollars and getting Either your taxes way, done should be in the If same. you need some <laughs> consulting, I have a good friend named Nadine Madawi. You're, you're about to get the cops about to start knocking <laughs> on his door. You talking about? He's a hell of a guy. Man. He went to school. He knows everything there is to do and there is about accounting. If anyone still has done their taxes or need any consulting, you can contact him on his Facebook at Nadine Madawi. He's a hell of a guy. Anyways, and I'd like to thank Perennial Landscaping. It's a family business for sponsoring us. If you have any questions, you can call them at 519-532-0076. You can ask for Seth. He's all right. He's a nice guy. He's my little brother. And if you're looking for a fresh cut, there's a guy you can go see, right, Alvin? Yeah. Ring, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> go holler at one. You can see him at the Cherry Hill Mall. You can text him at 519-719-5721. There's no appointments. You just got to text him and say, what's up? Ask him if it's busy. You might have to wait. That's how good he is. Too bad. So sad, right, E? Yeah. But, it's yeah. a fresh cut. And as Kellen says, you get to put get put in the game, right? You put him in the game. That's what he's telling him <laughs> with the cut. Put him in the game. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'd like to give a big thanks again to Apex Radio for this wonderful opportunity. I'm looking forward to it. I know you are too, Alvin, aren't you? Most definitely. Most definitely. And we're going to be on, every, once again, we're going to be on every Monday and Friday from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask us at our Facebook page. Like us as well there. Subscribe on iTunes. Rate us. Review us. Tell us what we're doing right. Tell us what we're doing wrong. And if you, like I said, if you have any questions you'd like to ask Alvin or myself, probably Alvin. You can contact us on Facebook. Everybody have themselves a wonderful day. I know you didn't choose the cards you was dealt. I hope you're moving on and feeling better about yourself. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I know you didn't choose the cards you was dealt. I hope you're moving on and feeling better about yourself. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. Why they hating been aggravated for so long? Steady casting stones as I continue to roll on. Baby, you the best, that's so far gone. I got no one to call on, can't let bygones be bygones. I'm half back, playing time waste. I'm Johnny Depp in the ninth gate. I put you in my mind state. I'm all right, your mans can't concentrate. Study the moves they make. Every card I'm playing here is high stakes. Know when to hold them in, know when to fold them. In a room full of snakes, eyeball them bread on your plate. And though I focus on the Lord's will, I'm steady dancing on the devil's heels. It's in my ear, let's make a deal. Illuminati want my mind, soul, and my body. I trade it all for a new Bugatti. A good dude with good qualities. Look how far I got it. Trying to make it out the game like trying to win the lottery 
I know you didn't choose the cards you was dealt. I hope you're moving on and feeling better about yourself. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I know you didn't choose the cards you was dealt. I hope you're moving on and feeling better about yourself. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. Show you how to move to get through the street struggle. It's like I'm lifting weights but ain't gaining no muscle. Every day you hustle, want cream to escalate. Mom Dukes won't nominate because she can't tolerate. Is it hate or fate? Me and the devil got a date at eight to crush dreams, plan schemes, and run from Jake. Soon to be sold out tapes, unlimited pace. If Kiss and Don P, barefooted, we crush grapes. Superheroes rocking capes, coach chefs baking them cakes. Mortgages were high rates, bets were high stakes. Everybody got a soul, but not everybody got love. Some cities might be safe, but every city got a thug. If you're hiding from the feds, all of your phones got a bug. Can't even trust you on blood when it's down to do or die. They look you in the eye, tell you a white lie. Life is crisscross and there's always a witness. Your own mother could have your name on the hit list. Stay strong inside, you will survive. Keep them eyes open wide with herb to get you fried. My lyrics blew up the world and everybody just died. Kiss taking you on a ride like I was an exhibition. You want more? Make a decision at intermission. Rap song submissions, MC collisions. Kiss from CT with that 3D vision. I know you didn't choose the cards you yeah. was dealt. I hope you're moving on and feeling better about yourself. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I know you didn't choose the cards you was dealt. I hope you're moving on and feeling better about yourself. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures.